for 16 months, 530 days. We've been watching the airplanes come and go <laughs> from the back of our house, looking out at Deerfoot Trail, the buses, the cars, everybody buzzing around. And we just want to be back in Thailand where we belong. And I thank God for the time that we've had to be able to work on Cherry Red. What an exciting project that's been. Just neat to be able to do something this creative and this out of the box. You know, as well as finish off our 29 Dodge, painting it, doing some other mechanical maintenance work on the vehicles and on our house. But anyway, our house is ready to rent out. We posted it on Airbnb and people are starting to call and make bookings. And we are about to get on a plane, but first, we've got something very important to take care of. Okay, it's me and Esther. And you remember Esther from the Saskatchewan trip, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, we took <laughs> off across the prairies and um, dismantled a bunch of cars and hauled two home. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are going to pack up. Well, let me show you. Come on out in the garage. <laughs> we've got to... Uh, we got a lot of stuff here to move. I mean, this whole place is a mess right now. It's crazy. Because we're packing up. Oh boy, it's bright out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the deal. So, there's Cherry Red. And this is the shop. I'm gonna just go up here, get a wider look at it. And in this shop, we are going to put this car maybe sideways and move it up here to the bench and then we're going to put the trailer with the solstice on it here and then the 29 dodge in the middle and then the 42 chef truck over on that side yep. and <laughs> pack it all up lock it all up and get on the airplane and fly to thailand We've done that well, kind of stuff before. Yes, we've done it before. And these are the two 51 Chef Tudor hardtops that we brought home from Saskatchewan. Yep. And they've been under tarps now for a year, two years, something like that. Something like that. And they're going to stay there <laughs> maybe another winter <laughs> with those tarps. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, here's all the parts piled underneath the deck here. Um, yeah, we'll just tidy them up and be gone. Okay, let's go to the front of the house. Now we are going to rent this house out, Airbnb. So this garage will go with it. And um, yeah, put my hot rod pictures up over there. I hope Airbnb people like it. <laughs> so, um, and I fixed the garage door, the 2008 Solstice. Notice I cleaned it. Oh yeah. Huh? Isn't that good? Very nice. <laughs> it's been dusty for, <laughs> I, we haven't had it on the road for a couple of years. No. And um, so anyway, we're going to put it on the flat deck trailer. And pull the trailer into the shop with the 42 Chev. And so that's the next thing. And yeah, we'll get that done.
Okay, one down. Yeah. Look at that. Solstice and trailer right in the garage. Perfect. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. And I think it's given us enough room right here. We can shove cherry red kind of backwards in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then the 28 Dodge, 29 Dodge will go right here. I think there's enough room for the 29 Dodge. And then there's some Smiley. Oh, yeah, lots of room. We got lots of room. Yes, we do. You won't be able to work in here or move in here, but. There'll be enough room for the cars. That's all that <laughs> That's matters. All that matters. <laughs> we'll tick double lock, 40 below. We won't even mind. Yep. And up there, there's the furnace up there. It's going to keep everything from freezing. This is the last Mohican to be put away in the garage for the winter. And even though it's only August, but. Uh, yeah, we're doing good here, getting all cleaned up and getting ready to go. And thank God for a garage, a good place to put all these guys during the 40 below winters. I don't know, hope it's 40 below. I won't be here, so it doesn't matter to me so much. But uh, hopefully we get some snowfall this year. And so that there'll be some crops next year. A lot of the dryland farmers didn't get a thing along these prairies this year. So, you know, you, uh, some point in life you have to decide whether you like cats better than dogs or dogs better than cats. So in the same sort of way, you've got to decide whether you like cars better than trucks. <laughs> and of all the vehicles that I've ever had, I got to say, you know what, I think I like trucks. I love this 42 Chev because it's rough and ready and it'll go through the bush, you know, four wheel drive, winch on the front. It used to have PTO winch on the front, but it stuck out like two and a half feet. I was afraid somebody's going to get hurt with it. So I put an electric winch and hit it inside the grill. And if you get a scratch on it, you just paint over it with flat black. The other day we were moving some stuff to Derek and Margaret's house on the Northwest. And there's a freeway going out there, about four lanes. And the hail started coming down. And uh, you know, in this truck, it's solid. Like there ain't no hail gonna hurt it. But all over Calgary, like thousands of cars last year, still have golf ball sized dents in them from hail broken windshields broken rear windows side windows mirrors torn off like it was it was bad a couple of times last year and you know the hail piled up on the road out here like a foot deep in the middle of summer <laughs> and uh and so we're going down this freeway and all of a sudden all the brake lights come on and everybody's stopping trying not to run into the guy in front of them and here what had happened is as the hail's coming down you've got the chickens, right? I don't want my car to get hurt by the hail. So they come to this overpass over the highway, over the freeway, and they all stop underneath it to protect their cars. Four lanes wide, up both shoulders, up inside, you know, the, the berm that the, that the overpass is on. Um, you know, there's probably about 20 or 30 cars in there. Meanwhile, there's a thousand cars behind them who can't get through. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, like people are looking after their own, right? Like, <laughs> it's, it's quite a thing. But now I've got all of these good old vehicles in here. I'm going to put uh, little battery tenders on them, but only have three. So one guy has to, what should we do, draw lots, you know, <laughs> see which one doesn't get one. The 49 Chev, Cherry Red, has, I think it's a decent battery. It's from the CTS Cadillac, still in the same place. So I'll put one on there because I need that one when I get back to Canada. Um, Mr. Smiley, the 42 Chev, has two batteries in it. It's got a big one mounted under the fender to run the winch, and so those are both new. And the 29 Dodge has a new battery. Uh, when I painted it last spring, or I don't know when that was, I guess it was actually 2019, 2020, 
yeah 2020 and so they're expensive now hey batteries like they start at 100 bucks for a little one anyway the solstice is a 2008 model and the battery still starts the car fine there's no signs of it being bad but i think if i have to choose one that i'm going to replace uh it's going to be that one because it's going to need replacing fairly soon anyway <laughs> so everybody's put to bed nice and snug for the winter and um yeah so maybe you know when in thailand we're sitting in 36 degree heat and i hear that it's 40 below in calgary i'm going to replay this video and watch it myself and um yeah hopefully everything will stay warm the furnace comes on i think at about 10 degrees celsius so it keeps it from freezing and i may seal up the doors a little bit make sure i've got them locked good put some vice grips on the inside uh, so nobody gets in here yeah and that's that's it and one more thing it's interesting in our church last sunday the pastor that was receiving the offering talked about one of the core values of the church and that is to live simply and give generously and i like that core value live simply and give generously in other words organize your life so that you can live effectively and yet still give generously in other words don't use all of your resources on yourself and you know when a lot of people say in fact i had one lady say uh well i know how much those cars are worth and i'm like yeah but you don't know how much i paid for them <laughs> 42 Chevy, I paid 40 bucks for it. <laughs> 29 Dodge, I paid 300 bucks for it. And then this one here, the 49 Chev, I actually paid 1500 bucks for it, but that was only a couple of years ago. So this old tin's becoming really expensive. And you say, where do you get a 42 Chev for $40? Well, actually in a farmer's field in 1970 something. <laughs> And same with the 28 Dodge, right? I mean, or 29 Dodge. The story of that is I bought it when I was 18 years old, just got out of high school. And, um, and then you just keep fixing them. So it's a simple life. I don't ever have to go visit the repair shop or the, you know, the automotive shop or anything. I've never had to take my cars in for anything. I do my own paint, do my own everything. And so that really simplifies it down and leaves, leaves it so that we're not stuck and focused on this. Now, you know there's guys who will focus everything that they have on a hobby like this and spend big bucks on it. But that loses its appeal to me. That's no longer a hobby then. It's just a hole to put money in. And if there's one thing to put money in that never get you never get it back, it's cars, okay? Now these ones, you know that they appreciate as we go. I think all of them, even the Solstice is gonna appreciate. That's why I bought that and not a minivan. Well, that's a lot more fun to drive. Anyway, okay, so live simp simply, minimalistically, so that you can give generously or so that you can be useful to other people around you. And we'll see you next week on Car Cobbler.